try to shield the sun. The left foot in swinger here. The header is score! And the breakers on the board, Whitney Engen. Halfway through the Boston Breakers 2016 campaign, things have not gone exactly as hoped. Final moments, and there is the final whistle. The Breakers with their first victory of the season, 1-0 over FC Kansas City. But as the team enters the Olympic break, there are plenty of bright spots, starting with two Breakers players being named to their national teams. Forward Kaya Simon to the Australian squad, and defender Whitney Engen to Team USA. Whitney's been fantastic. I knew when I got this job, she was one of the players I wanted to bring to the club, purely and simply because I know what she brings to the field by way of the quality that she possesses as a defender. Um, even offensively, she's a good player because she can turn defence into attack quite quickly. But the most important thing is she's a talker and she's a leader. Whitney Engen for third international goal. One of the other positive notes is the Breakers 2015 Player of the Year and team captain, Cassie Coleman. I think being a captain was the mindset that I was raised with in my family. My dad always told us from a young age, be a leader, be the first one, pick up your teammates, be vocal. I wanted to be the person that the team could rely on in hard times. I wanted to be the person that people could come to me off the field with problems that have to do with soccer or not. I don't know, I think it's just who I am as a person, so. Speaking of the Coleman family, it's a large one, and the soccer genes are very strong throughout. I have five older siblings in my family, and they all play soccer. So I was raised playing the game, and I always had my siblings to look up to, always going to their game, always seeing games when I was young and a high level. So I think I definitely am where I am because of them and because of being the youngest of six kids that play soccer. With four of her five siblings going on to play Division I college soccer and beyond, it was no surprise that Cassie would follow. The surprise is that she left her home state of Minnesota and chose to play at Florida State. I almost went to the University of Minnesota because my sister was a coach and I was super close to my family and my other sister I would have played with her for a year and I actually verbally told my dad and my sister I'm, I'm going to go to the U of M and they said no you're not and they pushed me to go because FSU is such a great program and I'm so happy that they did because I wouldn't have chosen another school if I could go back and do it again. So. Very grateful for my experience there. Florida State soccer is pretty grateful as well. Cassie was a four-year starter, a two-time academic All-American, plus helped the Seminoles win two ACC titles and a conference championship. <laughs> Cassie also managed to play for the U.S. Under-20 squad, which she captained, that won the 2012 World Cup before being drafted fifth overall by FC Kansas City in the 2014 NWSL draft. So ever since I had gotten to college, being a pro was on my mind. I just signed up for the draft, but I didn't know what team, I had no idea. Um, so when Kansas City called me at number five, I was very grateful and I was kind of surprised, but I was excited. After helping Kansas City win the championship in 2014, Boston acquired Cassie via trade, and the Breakers' back line has definitely been the better for it. As a player, I like to bring competitiveness, intensity. I like being a leader. I like to be a director back there. And, and then with the ball, I like playing simple. She is a dedicated player. Uh, believe me, I think if you can ask any girl on the training field who works the hardest, who's the most determined uh, during practices, they'll tell you it's Cassie Coleman. Cassie's a, she's a great person. She's a good leader in the dressing room and on the pitch. Um, and, and you know she, she she's been she's been good for us this year. Wow, this is so cool. The fans are awesome. After you know, even if it's a seven to one loss, they they tweet at us and say we're still behind you, we still support you, we still love you, and that's awesome to have fans like that who aren't going to waver whether you're winning or losing, and they're always there, and we're really appreciative of that support. Hi Libby, my name is Katie Calabro and I play for Newton Girls Travel Soccer. I would love to know when you decided you wanted to be in goalie and what you love about playing the position. Well, thanks Kaylee for your uh, question. Um, I started to play goalkeeper when I was about 14 and I did that because uh, my team at the time needed a goalkeeper and they asked like a whole bunch of people to do it and there was about five of us and I was one of them. and. 
Uh, I ended up just kind of loving it and I think my most favorite thing I like about playing goalkeeper is just being in a position to make uh, big saves and, and really kind of uh, change the outcome of games. I think that's a really cool thing to, to have the responsibility for. So, um, and I like to be able to use my hands, so that's nice too. Coming up next, we'll spend a game day with Breakers defender Julie King. Plus, find out some surprising facts about some of your favorite players. Stay with us. Did you know that Matt Beard is the seventh head coach in Boston Breakers history? We do not leave tonight with nothing less than three points, all right? So you make sure we do that and we make sure we're disciplined and we're brave. Come on, let's go. Yeah. 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 Matt is a native of Roehampton, England, a suburban district in southwest London. And before joining the Breakers in September 2015, he coached the Liverpool Ladies FC to two straight FA Women's Super League titles. Now let's check in with veteran Breakers defender, Julie King, and see exactly how she spends her game days. We are going to Ball Square Cafe in Somerville, um, my favorite brunch place in Boston. And uh, we're going to meet my dad, who flew in last night from St. Louis, and my host mom from my second season, Katie Andrade, and her son, Will, her one-year-old son. Um, and my host family from my second season has become uh, kind of like my little family in Boston now, so they're going to meet us there. Well, we knew you were a perfect fit. I knew when you um, you asked for seconds the first time I made dinner. <laughs> when we'd come up, Julie, Julie or myself or both of us, we'd stay with you guys. And even last year when, when I wasn't living with you guys anymore, we still and yeah. my parents would stay with them. Uh, they, so they were host, host parents to me and my mom and dad. Yeah, we try to go to every game. I mean, it's just like the greatest thing ever. I mean, right. season tickets next to each right other. Right next to each other. Oh, right next to each other. Yeah. It's definitely a lot more fun when you have a vested interest in, in their success more than just through wins and losses. But it's fun to cheer for you and your teammates and kind of getting to know everybody. Yeah. So, Jewel, what do you got? What's after this? Is it nap time? Yeah, I guess, something like that. Nap, I didn't know what movie. you were... Yeah, my game day routine is, is pretty, pretty strict. Once breakfast is complete, Julie's game prep calls for a little relaxation at home and, of course, a healthy pre-game meal. My game day is pretty boring. Today I uh, took a little nap and then I watched um, a little... Usually I have like a show that I'm watching at the time, but right now I just finished up a show, so I watched um, a documentary today. And then got up and you now I'm cooking my pregame meal, which I am also very particular about. Late afternoon, and it's time for Julie to start getting serious. She wants to win tonight and not just for herself. We've got loyal fans, that's for sure. We've definitely had our ups and downs, but I think we're going to turn it around here. And it's nice to know that, you know, we have the support of our fans. We hear them out there every game. So that's definitely um, been a, a drive for us, for me, the past five seasons. Arriving at Jordan Field on the grounds of Harvard University, it's now time for the final mental and physical preparations for tonight's tilt with the Washington Spirit. We've got players in this dressing room that have won championships, that have won trophies. So my point is, we've got people in here that know how to win games and, and moments in games. We start thinking about the game, we focus and we stick together. Come on, let's go.
15th minute, she'll guard, penalty kick. Amber tied at one. And that'll be a foul on King as she definitely tugged down Nairn. And we got a card for her right at the halfway line. I think that's Julie's first yellow this year. No, it's not. Oh, it's not? <laughs> okay. Tied one to one into the second half, and both teams get their chances. But ultimately, that's the way it stays. It's not perfect, but Julie and the Breakers will take it. There's the final whistle. So the Breakers and Spirit will tie one one here today. All right, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of the performance. Well done, okay? Good. Good work, ladies. Good work. My name is Kaya Simon and I'm from Sydney, Australia. I started when I was eight years old. Uh, it was actually my childhood best friend, uh, my next door neighbour, who, who said uh, we should go down and, and try out at our local um, soccer club. If I were to hang with any one celebrity, I do love Rihanna. Um, and Justin Bieber would be pretty cool for a day as well. So, Favourite sport other than soccer, I love a bit of rugby league uh, from back home. And it's come away to my Oh, that's so Wow. What makes me laugh the most would be uh, just when people prank other people. I find that, like, hilarious. <laughs> Favourite food is smashed avo with poached eggs on sourdough. <laughs> The one thing that I could not live without is my family and friends. If I had a warning label, mine would probably be moody when hungry. <laughs> Coming up, we'll join Stephanie McCaffrey and Christy Mewis for some cooking tips you don't want to miss. Plus, lots more soccer with your favorite Breakers players. Stay with us. Hey Annabelle, thanks for your question. Um, I do do a couple of things before I play just to kind of keep myself relaxed but focused and ready to go. Um, when I was younger I actually used to listen to classical music to not get too pumped up. Uh, I don't really need to do that anymore, I don't need to get that calm. Um, but what I like to do is I like to go through a couple of just deep breathing exercises, visualization, and I just like to set a goal or two for myself in the game so that when I get into the game I know exactly what I need to do and I'm focused on those things and then I sort of let you know, my mind and my body take over when I'm out on the field. But having those two little points um, to think about before I go out on the field really helped just get me focused and in the right mindset and then you know, just get out there and let it happen. Hey guys, I'm Stephanie. Uh, I'm here with Christy. We're in South Boston. This is where we live. Um, this is where we always shop at our local foodies. So if you guys want to follow us in, we're going to go grab some stuff to make buffalo chicken. Investing in myself with organic chicken. Key. All natural. <laughs> <laughs> Today we will be making buffalo chicken, or I should say honey buffalo chicken, because that's our secret little twist. And on the side we're going to do uh, maple bacon sweet potatoes, roasted. Which and is broccoli. And broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> but what we're going to do is take the cut up plain sweet potatoes, put them into a bowl, so here's the pepper, Himalayan sea salt, garlic powder. Use a spoon. No, it's okay, my hands are clean. All right, while she's doing that, I'm gonna chop the vegetables. We have some really good flavored uh, olive oil. It's Tuscan herb infused yeah. olive oil. So that kind of like makes it taste a little bit better. And like salt and pepper and just stir fry it up. Here's the bacon. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it into really small pieces and we're gonna throw those in and essentially toss them in with the sweet potatoes. And now the secret ingredient 
for these is we're gonna take some agave, which is kind of like honey, kind of like maple syrup. It's really strong sweetener, but it's natural. It doesn't make me feel as bad about myself that we're dumping sugar on bacon. That's not right. That's not a good method. Like, no, get the tongs. The that is, look at that. Yeah, that's, that looks done, right? Yeah. All right, so last step, she's gonna do the broccoli, and I'm gonna do the buffalo sauce. Kind of an eyeballer, so what we do is you just throw in enough to cover the bottom of the pan of Frank's wing sauce, a little bit of red wine vinegar, pepper, salt, and the, the key to the buffalo sauce is a tiny bit of sweetness, so it's almost like, well, this is agave. It's already opened. Makes it like a honey buffalo sauce, so I just add a dash, stir it up. Yeah, so now what we're gonna done. do is uh, we're gonna see if we have two clean plates. <laughs> just a big game. We do! No way. This doesn't usually happen. Oh, we have three. Yeah, we clean for you, no. So, we usually only have one clean plate, or we go paper <laughs> plates, so this is like a big, big <laughs> event in unit one. Yeah, but who's, who gets credit yeah. for that? Well, I'm the chef, she's the cleaner. And what we do is take the sauce, pour it into the bowl with the chicken. I'm like obsessed with buffalo chicken. It's our favorite, would you say that's our favorite food, Chris? Yeah. All right, well, uh, that's our buffalo chicken sweet potato dish. Um, unfortunately, you guys got you guys got to get out of here because it's tradition that we eat in front of the TV, uh, family dinner. So, we'll see you guys later. Bye. My name is Eunice Beckmann, and I'm from Germany. Wuppertal is actually a big city. It's in West Germany, and they have like a um, bus in the air, and that's like the yeah, the thing in, in the part time, my favorite movie. I really like this movie, Inside Man. I like all the Leonardo DiCaprio movies. My favorite mu music artist is, right now, I would say it's Drake and Rihanna. If I wouldn't be the soccer player, I would, if I would be talented in it, I would probably want to be a singer. I'm not, I'm not a good singer, right? If I would have all the money in the world, I would give it to people who need it. Did you know that in the 2011 FIFA World Cup, the Boston Breakers sent eight players to three separate national teams? Lauren Cheney, Rachel Bueller, Stephanie Cox, Kelly O'Hara, and Amy LaPelbet all went to Team USA. While Kelly Smith and Alex Scott played for England, and defender Aya Samashima played for the eventual champions, Japan. One thing that has always stood out about the Boston Breakers is their true love for the sport of soccer. Nowhere is that more evident than in the team's unswerving commitment to their youth and development program. The Breakers call it the Pyramid. A part of the model from a business standpoint, more so a development standpoint, is we needed to build some structure underneath the pro team. A lot of our support that we have through game days is through youth soccer. And Massachusetts has a lot of youth soccer groups here. So we originally started to build the Pyramid from that point. The success of the youth programs led to a more involved European-style initiative, where the team has players from youth through college up to a reserve team, all learning and competing under the Breakers banner. We recently partnered with uh, NEFC, New England Football Club. They've been around for a long time. They're very successful by what they do. They have a large program, and um, you know we were able to forward a, a partnership that sees a lot of the regional and local teams be branded as NEFC Breakers. So now that pyramid's really set up that after the development training centers, we have the NEFC Breakers. 
and then we have the Boston Breakers Academy, which is the ECNL, and then from that we go to our U20s, to the College Academy, to the Reserves, to the Pro Team. And if we can create players from the bottom and bring them into the Boston Breakers and, and really grow them how we want them, them to develop in this environment, then uh, just in getting some of the top players or what we believe will be the top players and be able to keep them in market. And with so many great New England women's programs, the ability to recruit locally is key to the Breakers' future success. The ability for a player to come in at one of our recreation camps at five years old and then one day become a professional player within our own organization, it's, um, it's extremely pleasing and something we're very, very proud of. Along with developing great local players, the Breakers Pyramid is also helping grow a whole new generation of fans. Next year we'll have 1,300 kids that are playing in the Breakers um, uniforms. Then again, it adds more success to what we're doing in terms of the brand, the business model, and more probably the development of soccer in this country. Time! Nobody ever said playing in the National Women's Soccer League was going to be easy. So after a tough first half, your Boston Breakers are planning to regroup and finish the 2016 campaign strong. We've proved in every game that we can compete, but we've just got to get back to what we had at the start of the year, having the positivity, and it's important that we we have a positive second half of the season. You know, we can still pick points up, we can still pick results up, and we can still climb, you know, climb the standings, and that's that's our target and that's our goal. Um, and we're going to do our utmost to do that.